we are not going back to the way it was. Um, even if all 15 universities uh, have uh, on-campus classes this fall to some degree, we just know it's not going to be like it was uh, last fall. We're all looking forward to what's going to happen with schooling in the fall, especially looking at our colleges and universities in the state of Michigan. And joining me now is Dan Hurley. He is the CEO of Michigan Association of State Universities and the coordinating board, really, for the 15 public universities in the state of Michigan. Hi, Dan. Good morning. It's good to see you. Uh, you have your hands full right now. Um, can you give us a sense of where we are now these first weeks of May? what the biggest issues are at the, at the uh, universities here in Michigan, looking forward to the fall? I would say two come to mind. One is just financial stability. Uh, the, the universities are getting hit in every possible revenue stream. Um, uh, the, the first hit came through the uh, auxiliary enterprises. So uh, campus housing, dining, uh, bookstores, uh, summer camps, uh, everything that all just came to a complete halt and then refunds were issued in most cases. Um, there are concerns about what might happen with enrollment. Uh, so far, summer enrollment seem to be doing pretty good across the 15 universities online, but then there's certainly a lot of concern about what might happen. All kinds of varying predictions about what might happen with fall enrollment. And then uh, the other unknown at this moment is what might happen with state funding. Uh, Michigan is already a laggard, uh, one of the, the worst states in the nation in terms of investing in higher education. Um, and uh, we're sort of, you know, holding our breath and hoping that the other shoe doesn't drop in terms of, um, you know, state funding for the current year, let alone next year. And, and the federal stimulus dollars helped out to some degree, but it came nowhere clear, uh, you know, fully offsetting the huge financial hit uh, that are hitting universities. And then the other thing I would say is happening, uh, a lot of focus across the, the universities is really um, continuity planning, going about this incredibly complex and arduous task of planning for the resumption of on-campus classes and activities. And there are just so many variables in that. And so we're trying to help uh, shepherd that conversation, uh, recognizing that it all begins with public health and safety. But around that, there are so many other considerations for students, for faculty, staff, for visitors. And so helping with that conversation. And, and, and looking at, at the public health aspect of it and if people feel safe coming back on campus, and that really dovetails into the enrollment, which goes to your budget. So when you look at if I'm going to be paying for Michigan State University um, for online classes and, and living at home, that might make a lot of different decisions for, for students in whether they even want to enroll at that university for the next year or if they want to stay home and try something different or take a year off. Are you finding or are the universities starting to reach out? Are they surveying their students or, or what, what's the, the, the feedback that they're getting? Yeah, they're, they're certainly doing a lot of outreach. Uh, one thing that we've done, we've teamed up with the state's uh, 25 independent colleges and, and uh, issued a statement um, so 40 colleges issued a statement a couple of weeks ago, really assuring um, students, first and foremost, and their families about flexibility with regard to admissions, uh, making sure that, you know, these interruptions that have taken place uh, at the high school level are not going to impact admissions decisions. And then when it comes to uh, you know, what's going to happen this fall, that's still up in the air. I think most universities are going to... Um, uh, make a formal announcement of what that model will look like probably late mid June to early July. Um, interestingly, as you mentioned, there are a lot of uh, possibilities out there. Uh, the idea of, of not or, you know, attending a college, maybe a community college closer to home or when it's in state versus out of state, um, doing a gap year and skipping it all together, um, all kinds of uh, potentials there. But what I've seen from a preliminary basis is that the enrollment numbers are actually looking pretty good right now for deposits. Um, one interesting aspect is while there certainly are health and safety considerations, there's financial uh, implications in terms of ability for a student and family to afford college. Right. This quarantining is creating a lot of pent up 
uh, interest in all of us. And so I think there might be actually a stronger desire to actually head off to uh, the college across town or across state. You know, you're representing all of the universities in the state of Michigan. Is there going to be, though, some kind of, of competition um, where you have the different universities setting what their goals are going to be for students back on campus or what goes at U of M will go at Michigan State, will go at Western? Um, and is there any kind of tension there versus what one institution is going to do versus another? I think that might have been the case uh, to some degree when all the universities converted to online education on that fateful day in March. It was uh, announced around 10 in the morning by Michigan State and by nine o'clock that night, 14 other universities had made that transition. Um, I think it's gonna be a little bit different um, in terms of the resumption of on-campus activities and classes by the universities, keeping in mind that they are so diverse, whether they're commuter campuses largely, whether the residential campuses, whether they're in urban Detroit or rural uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, um, uh, the size of the community, the campus community, um, whether they have a primarily undergraduate mission or if there's a lot of research involved, there's so many different factors. Um, so I, I, you know, I think we, we have the most uh, market-based collection of public universities in the country. I think that's a good thing. It drives up quality. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see that um, you know, independent decision making uh, uh, regarding the resumption of on campus operations, but again, with, with health and safety uh, being the most key component. Let's talk a little bit about budgeting that we've seen some layoffs at universities around the state. Um, obviously, some universities really rely on athletics um, to be able to bring in a lot of money as well. And then if you're not getting a lot of funding from the state, but yet hesitant to raise tuition, knowing full well that families are going to be hurting right now coming out of this, um, what does uh, the money situation look like for universities or some in better positions than others? Because some were already suffering before the pandemic. Absolutely, yes. I mean, we've been uh, underfunded in this state for a long time. We've had uh, enrollment challenges just by uh, way of being a, a, an older graying state. We're one of the top forecasted states in, in the nation in terms of the uh, forecast decline in high school graduates. So that's already been a challenge. So yeah, this I would have never thought uh, in, in my career, I would look back at the Great Recession and say that was, uh, wasn't a cakewalk, but it's going to make this um, you know, that was pretty easy compared to this. Um, they're just, the universities uh, are getting hit by, you know, at every level. Um, one of the areas why there is a lot of uh, unknowns with regard to enrollment this fall, where there is one greater certainty is that is a huge decline in international students, essentially assuming just given travel restrictions, uh, maybe no new uh, net new international students. And for even the, the smallest colleges to the largest is all in order of magnitude. And so that's not just a, a hit on those higher paying students for one year. It's, you know, it's a four year cohort, really. So uh, it hits that um, revenue pipeline for several years. So the universities are in full fledged uh, financial stability mode, um, making, uh, you know, there has been some savings in terms of facilities not being uh, utilized online. Um, and um, uh, things like that, but they're having to go well beyond that. And they're freezing uh, travel, obviously, freezing positions and hiring. But now, as you're saying, they are turning to uh, temporary furloughs and what might become more permanent layoffs. Uh, with so many facilities closed, uh, there isn't a need for uh, uh, people to operate the buildings, um, for our residential life staff, for dining staff custodians, you name it. So a lot of those uh, workers uh, are in the process of being furloughed or, or laid off. And I think we're going to see much more of that in the, the coming weeks. Um, talk to me a little bit about athletics um, and, and what some of the universities are taking into consideration um, that is a big part of uh, university life, college life, um, for the student athletes, as well as the atmosphere for the students who go to the schools. Um, what are they talking about in, in terms of what we're going to see from athletics in the fall? Yeah, so I have not been particularly engaged in that work. I did just see a set of pretty comprehensive guidelines uh, issued on May 7th from the American College Health Association regarding the, the resumption of campus uh, activities and about half the document of all the things that take place on a college campus, about half of it 
pertain to college athletic. There are so many unique considerations there. I do think that all eyes are on the NCAA uh, to take the lead, uh, given their obviously focus on that issue. Uh, but again, I would say it is in order of magnitude. Uh, obviously, the, our larger research flagship universities are better resourced, uh, but a lot of that resource base comes from uh, big time college athletics. And uh, if those are not in place this fall, or the coming uh, academic year, that is going to be a huge, huge uh, hit to, uh, to revenues and certainly the entire collegiate experience that we enjoy here in Michigan. Dan, um, you know, we've talked about that uh, COVID-19 has disrupted so much and, and forever changed the way we're going to do things, whether it's school, whether it's work at home. Um, how would you describe this entire disruption um, to the universities in Michigan and what we're going to see from higher ed going forward for not just Michigan, but for everyone across the board? Yeah, well, so many uh ideas come to mind i think one is simply the new normal uh we are not going back to the way it was um even if all 15 universities uh have uh, on-campus classes this fall to some degree we just know it's not going to be like it was uh last fall um and certainly you ask a really good question of what is the the, the longer term landscape the educational delivery model of higher education in Michigan throughout the country. And I do think it'll be changed. Um, I've been impressed with um, how, you know, thousands and thousands of faculty have uh, converted their instruction almost overnight to online. And so far, no major issues with that, but certainly going forward, if there's, I, we just know there's gonna be a higher level of online or hybrid um, uh, uh, courses, some taught online, some in person, um, that's going to be kind of the new normal and that's got to, there's going to be expectations around uh, the quality dimension that's going to be a really high quality engaging um, and make sure that the student learning outcomes are very high and I also think that the the, uh, the model uh, in this the calendar for example is going to change we've already had one university uh, announce their plan to start a couple weeks early and go full-time until Thanksgiving and then Hamill have almost a two month break and then recommence mid January going straight through to April, uh, maybe no spring break. And so there are many, many uh, very innovative uh, models out there. And I think that uh, we are finally going to see the uh, kind of the typical uh, agrarian model of higher ed that's been here for a couple hundred years um, change. And, you know, for better or for worse, it took a pandemic to do it. Um, but I will say this I'm very proud of the. Uh, program quality, quality of Michigan's public universities, that is gonna to continue to be a focal point in whatever the delivery model looks like in one, two, three years, um, I do think that that quality dimension is gonna remain very, very high. All right, well, Dan Hurley, the CEO of Michigan Association of State Universities, will stay in touch with you uh, as things continue to develop this summer and um, then those kids start applying in the fall. We'll see where it all goes from here, but I appreciate your time, Dan. Thank you. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.